to congratulate uh, the class on their admissions. I think uh, it's a fantastic choice that you have made and I want to uh, highlight a particular aspect of this course that I feel is dearly needed from an industry perspective. Right? I think uh, the emphasis on hands-on practical education that Vedam has is really something that you know resounds a lot to somebody like me. I would like to call upon Mr. Pengur sir to come on the stage. He is also being the part of Stanford University. So please uh, come on the stage and enlighten us with your golden words. Give a huge round of applause. Current stint at Microsoft, I was at Flipkart and as a chief data scientist. And uh, you know this problem about given a product image, how do you make sense out of it? How do you extract attributes like the color, the pattern, and things of that sort? Right? It's a very common phenomenon that happens in e-commerce. Now earlier we used to do these solve these problems using humans, but when you have to do this a million times a day, a billion times a day, and I'm not making these numbers up, right? There's simply no way that humans can do this. And the only way that you can actually make a business out of solving these problems, solving these tasks is to get the computers to do it. You guys are going to be using ChatGPT and, and Gemini and so many products out there. And I don't know whether you try to figure out what goes, at the, what goes behind the scene, what is actually powering this intelligence, right? So the core of it is basically mathematics. These are some uh, simple to very complex mathematical functions that are trying to simulate or approximate human judgment making, right? That's what AI machine learning is. There are far more uh, uh, complex mathematical functions that you deal with, whether it is support vector machines, whether it is decision trees, and these days what everybody is talking about, namely neural networks, right? In fact, deep neural networks. So these functions become more and more and more complex, but there is a way in which you can find the optimal function or a near optimal function, and that's what really all this field is about. So let me take you back to early 19, maybe 98, 99, early 2000s, right? Companies like Google, Amazon, uh, Facebook started coming up, right? And, and all of you have used these products. Uh, you have ordered uh, e-commerce, ordered from an e-commerce website, you have done Google search, you have used YouTube, you have used many other Google products, right? What started happening is that people started interacting with these consumer internet sites. And tons and tons of data about how people interact with them started getting, was getting collected. This data at this magnitude was never seen before. And what also fueled this particular data collection is the fact that we could use and make sense out of this data. So you also had a lot of revolution in the hardware space. So you had uh, storage, you had compute, and even specialized compute like GPUs, etc., which became cheaper and cheaper, right? So that was the other part of the revolution that happened. And the final and third thing is basically new algorithms started coming out which people open sourced. So this is a very unique culture about IT industry and software industry in particular where people don't keep their innovation to themselves but they actually open source it so that others can build on top of it. And I'm really hoping that you students as you, you know, go through the journey of uh, education and go out in the industry that you would also contribute to the open source system and open source software, right? Because the chat GPT did not happen overnight. Rome was not built in a day. There's a series of innovations, one uh, one step at a time that people did, and then when you put all of that together, you get the products of today like ChatGPT and so on and so forth, right? And I want to wish you all the best for the journey that is in uh, front of you.